this morning just picked up my trailer and I'm going to go over to uh, Dryden Ontario I'm gonna go pick up my load up there and then we're gonna go to Wisconsin so uh, it's uh, pretty foggy out here this morning but uh, oh well we'll uh, clear up after a little bit I guess once the Sun comes out but uh, yeah, today is going to be a pretty inter interesting day for you guys, I think, because we are going to go over uh, the border crossing called International Falls, Minnesota, and it's pretty interesting for the reason that it, the, the trucks have to cross over the uh, railway crossing, so that is usually uh, pretty interesting, I would think. It's a little river up there, and... Uh, got to cross over the railway crossing so it's a small border up there you know but uh, it's uh, it's nice to uh, nice to see you know so it's pretty interesting so stay tuned for that and we'll see you guys down the road just have a look here to the right here by the piston rings here you got a monkey up there holding up his thumbs but uh, anyways we are in uh, Vermilion Bay Ontario right now and it looks like the scales is open today so up here in Ontario you have to be governed at 105 kilometers an hour which is 65 kilometer, uh, 65 miles an hour so uh, for those of you that don't drive big trucks into Ontario if you ever do just keep that in mind otherwise you'll get big fines if you get caught now, let's see what the scale wants today I am empty so Shouldn't have too many problems here today, but you never know. We'll see. And it looks like they have usually just a uh, one-way uh, scale up here, so only uh, only one way can come across. But uh, if there's another truck coming the other way, you gotta wait till that one is crossed before you can scale. But, uh, let's have a look and see what they want today. Their digital clock there on the display ain't even working so turn right on Grey Draper Road Highway 17 so far so good lights still uh, yeah I guess you could call it a green or a yellow whatever it says forward didn't change so I guess I'm good to go should be able to see the big smoke stacks up there that is the uh, paper mill that I am going to go to and uh, pick up my uh, loaded trailer but before I do that I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to go to the husky there and grab me a bite to eat because once I leave riding here there's about a uh, hour and three quarters where there is pretty much nothing there is just a narrow highway and that's all you'll see now have a look at that truck that's a uh, military type of truck painted all in dark green color i suppose now this is just going to give you an idea on how big of a place this is you can't even see all of it yet on the on the video but it's certainly a huge place up here as you can see uh, you can't even quite see the complete uh, building yet you know I mean, that is a huge huge place this is where I'm going so I'm going to go pick up a load of pulp they call it it's raw paper uh, we are just doing a, a trailer switch here but uh, any of this just arriving here so we'll be back a little bit later have a look at that that's a that's a big deer looks like he's pretty calm down here it's basically at this mill here that uh, I'm picking up this trailer here so yeah I've just figured that was pretty cool okay just finished switching trailers up here trailer checks out everything is good on there so but anyways just wanted to show you guys the uh, big amount of uh, wood chips that these uh, guys have down here 
and uh, I just want to say uh, I wouldn't want to live in this town because uh, of all the chemicals that they put in, in the wood there to get all the bugs dead and everything like that it just smells horrible you can you can smell that chemical in this area you know but anyways so all that's left for me to do now is go scale out and I am out of here I will be down towards uh, the US going down towards the US and uh, go deliver this load probably deliver this tomorrow it's only 840 kilometers to go so it's just over around 500 miles I guess but uh, anyways uh, we'll go scale her out and we'll put the hammer down okay something I wanted to point out to you guys that uh, uh, if you ever do a trailer switch at a customer and they put a seal on it just make sure that you check your paperwork because uh, mine I just checked it and the seal don't match up with the paperwork so I have to go back to the shipping office and get that uh, paperwork corrected you know just as you can see over here there's uh, my seal number right there I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that really good but the seal number that I got on the trailer number is uh, is different you know it's uh, instead of 41 it's 42 at the end so just always make sure that you do check your seal number otherwise uh, if I'm going across the border like I am today if customs check my paperwork and they check the seal number and it don't match well then guess what I'm going to be in trouble they're probably going to look at me as I did something fishy with the seal and they're probably going to think I have something in the trailer so you don't want that to happen so make sure you check your seal number now this is what I was telling you guys about this is a really narrow stretch of highway you can see you have uh, absolutely no shoulder up here and it's uh, zigzagging like a snake and it's hilly too at some places and uh, it's 94 miles long which is 151 kilometers long this whole stretch and uh, it's 80 kilometers an hour speed limit up here as you can see right there which is 50 mile an hour speed limit for like 94 miles and uh, plus on top of that you have absolutely no cell service up here this is the highway that goes from Dryden, Ontario uh, to uh, Fort Francis here in Ontario here towards the border Fort Francis is on the uh, Canadian side and uh, anyways International Falls is on the Minnesota side but this highway is called the Highway 502 so as you can see it's a really narrow stretch of highway and uh, it just zigzags back and forth and hilly and you gotta watch out for deer and uh, I've seen moose up here you know Actually, when it gets dark so this is about all you'll get down this highway here is like a little pullout area like this that's about all you'll get every once in a while so well speaking of this uh, narrow highway something just uh, popped in my brain here and that is uh, uh, almost five years ago when I had just started with this company I uh, I was driving in the U.S. and I got broke down, and I uh, hitched a uh, well, I didn't hitchhike, but uh, I got a ride from another uh, of our company drivers back home, and uh, it was going to take about a week or a week and a half before my truck was fixed. But anyways, uh, once my truck was fixed, I caught a uh, ride with another driver going back to that direction to go pick up my truck, eh? and uh, we were going down the same narrow road here. And I was telling you guys that there is no cell service up here, you know. And luckily with this company, we have uh, a system uh, called Qualcomm, which uh, transmit messages over satellite. But uh, anyways, uh, we were going along here and we had just left Dryden. Uh, we only got up about 25 miles up on this highway and it was winter time. And uh, his, tr his truck uh, broke down and uh, it ended up being the head gasket was blown but anyways we were stranded out here and it was in the middle of the night and we just about froze to death up here you know because there's no not really that many people traveling up here and uh, we were sitting in the 
bunk, uh, cuddle up in our blankets, trying to stay warm. And absolutely nobody would stop to even check on us to see if we were doing all right or or whatever, you know. But uh, finally, after about three, four hours, we got a hold of our dispatch on the satellite system, and uh, they called the cops and they came down. And anyways, finally uh, we made it. But uh, uh, that just tells you, you know, you don't have no cell service. There's no way of getting any help to you, you know? So, uh, that was just a really, really painful experience, you know? When you start not to feel your uh, feel your toes anymore and you can barely move because that's how stiff you get and everything. You, you get bitterly cold, you know? That's, uh, that's not a fun place you want to be in in winter time. I think it was like minus 25 Celsius at that time. I don't know how much it is in Fahrenheit, but it was it was definitely cold. It was plus the wind chill was pretty uh, pretty cold that night, you know. So throw all that the combined there, you know. So well, that that was that was not a pleasant experience. All right, here we are at the border crossing that I was telling you guys about Continue earlier. Point three miles, then turn right on 2nd Avenue. This is how we have to cross the border up here. As you can see, this is a uh, railway crossing here, so... It's gonna be interesting to, uh, to see for some of you, I'm sure. Because uh, this is a border crossing that a lot of you probably would never expect to cross or... You would never expect to, to cross like this on a border, you know? But, uh, yeah, point two miles. Turn right on 2nd the, Avenue, then turn right. Over the river right now. And, uh, Crossing border, entering Minnesota. Right here is going to be Minnesota, so International Falls. Definitely interesting to see, eh? Turn right on 2nd right. Avenue, then turn right. Just finished here at the border. Just leaving the border right now. So we'll make our way down to uh, Rochelle, uh, Wisconsin today. I just recently received a reload offer, so I'm supposed to go to uh, Decalp, Illinois and pick up a load going to Mississauga, Ontario. So we'll, uh, we'll head back to uh, Ontario again, I suppose. But yeah, stay tuned for the rest. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see, but this is a beautiful, beautiful scenery down here. Uh, it's a beautiful big bridge. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the video there up ahead there. Uh, on the big lake up there. That's where I'm going to be crossing. So it's a, it's a quite a steep uh, down, downhill up here, but... Uh, yeah, we've always made it, so we'll, we'll make it down there and we'll uh, film that bridge and you can see that. I don't know, you might be able to see it a little bit better now. That's quite a ways uh, to go down, that's for sure. You know, be careful you don't smoke our brakes up here. Alright, here we are, coming up to the bridge up here. It's a fairly high bridge. I don't know how much of the lake you're going to be able to see, but uh, yeah, you should be able to see it quite well now, I think. So we are just crossing into Wisconsin right here. The other side uh, is uh, Duluth, Minnesota, and this side is uh, Superior, Wisconsin. Entering Wisconsin. It's called Superior, Wisconsin. Uh, GPS always has to say something, right? Point nine miles. Take ramp on the right to Wisconsin 35 South, then keep right. But there is usually a lot of uh, big uh, boats up here, like ships actually, you would say. And uh, they got a lot of uh, commercialized uh, material that they haul out of this place here, so... I don't think, oh there, to the left there, there's one, I don't know if you can be able to see it on the camera. Slide right on, W at 35 South US 53 South US 2, and then slide right in 600 feet. Alright, we'll go down this 35 here. Oh, it looks like that big boat is leaving right now. Too bad you guys can't see it. 
Take me on the right. Slide right in 35 south, U.S. 53 south, U.S. 2, and then slide right in 600 feet. Okay, just got to Superior, Wisconsin here. Found me a parking spot up here, so I will be spending the night up here. So, uh, anyways, uh, that's gonna bring it to the end of the day here today. So, be sure to follow me tomorrow at 5 a.m.